My name is Garrett, and today we're finally going to Milturn. Next thing up is to put this three jaw chuck in the spindle. I also put it on the low setting. So this pulley system here, the bottom one, the max RPM is 3,250, 3,250 RPM. So if you saw me bleeding there, I was. The keyway on this thing is super sharp and I ended up cutting my thumb. You can let them in here. So I have my stock in here, almost four inch long piece of aluminum, one and three eighths in diameter. And the chuck, I sort of indicated it as best I could. That there is good enough for government work. So let's take a look at my lathe tools here. This is a 3 8 shank and this is a CCMT insert. And this is a GT350R. So I have absolutely no idea about lathe tooling. I learned it back in school and I literally left that in the classroom. I loved milling more than lathe lathing. And now that I'm actually doing it, I actually need to know it, which is a problem. I was looking up all, all the, the codes and stuff, CCMT, GT, whatever. That was just mind blowing. It is literally a different language. It's a lot harder to actually know than the end mills because they use actual numbers, whereas these, the codes, correspond to numbers. That's what determines what the insert is. Now, I know these inserts are, can be a lot more technical than end mills. That's debatable. But to me, they are, I mean, they're a lot more like the different rake angles, clearance angles, all kinds of stuff. Inscribed circles in there. Yeah, it's it's wicked what you can do with lathe tooling. These shanks right here, those can be have different angles as well. And now I don't know if I'm using the correct ones, but that's clearly what we're going to find out. Now, if you really want to learn how to do mill turning and such, then go to Jason Hughes' videos or Eric Colvin's videos. So that's the part we will be making and this is a shifter extension prototype for Ford Fiesta's Ford Focus, Ford Foci, Ford Focuses. And that is the ST and the RS. So that's what this is right here. Well, this will be a prototype. So to center this tool up here on this piece of stock, basically I did an old school trick. Well, at least I think it's an old school trick. My teacher in a manual machining class, he taught me, he taught us that when you put a scale in here like this and you move this around till the scale is straight, and then when the scale is straight, that's when you know that you're lined up with your round piece of stock. So there is the stock setup right here. I'm going to come down here and face it off, profile the outside, and then I'll part it with the GT350R. So we used a piece of paper on the side here to figure out where we are and this piece of paper is two thousandths thick so then we just moved it back over that way two thousandths. This stock is actually 1.379 in diameter so we divided that by two and got 0.6895 so we're positive 0.6895 away from the center point. So we got everything set up. We got two work coordinate systems, G54 and G55. All the same, basically you're using the same tool in Fusion because you can't change tools because everybody thinks this is the tool. Everybody meaning PathPilot, this is the tool. So I decided to stop on the second pass of the facing operation just to check this out. It looks okay, we got a little, little dimple there that just shows that I didn't actually have it lined up right.
So I stopped yet once again mid program and we're about to do the parting off. And I'm a little bit scared because we're getting really close to the chuck. We're real close and we still have distance to go at DTG and the Z direction almost an eighth of an inch. So it started making some weird noises so I stopped it and wanted to feed up the RPM because I slowed the RPM down for this and I'm going to speed her back up. And there she is. That really wasn't as terrible as I thought it would be. The parting was a little wacky. It was just vibrating like crazy. Freaked me out. I probably have to optimize the, the feeds and speeds on that, but other than that, feeds and speeds are going to be the, the thing on this one. But I'm not sure how lathing feeds and speeds go. In a production environment, I would run all of these, all of this stock piece basically, with the mill lathe if you want to call it that. And then I would uh, swap this out, put the regular R8 call it back in, and make soft jaws and line these babies up. And this gets a big pocket in there and threaded down in there with an M12 by 1.25. And then this, from here down about a half inch, gets threaded with the M12 by 1.25 as well. Other than that, this turned out very good. So this has been the most frightening thing that I have done on this thing yet and I am very glad that I did it. I saw a bunch of people do it and it worked out good. I think this kind of stuff will sell. There's a lot of people that want these things for their Ford Fiesta STs, Focus STs and Focus RS as I've seen before. So what happens after this thing it all gets finished this gets a slight bend in it so imagine this that's straight up right now is sort of bent out that way. Now, I have, I have some ideas on how I'm going to do this, but I'm not 100% sure, but there will be more to come on this. This was just a whole monster in itself to get done, and it's actually really cool because I really wanted a lathe. I've been wanting a lathe for a while, and just not in the finances right now, so I did a uh, DIY lathe with the mill, but it's pretty cool. I enjoyed watching it. Hope you enjoyed watching it too. So thanks for watching.